So I'm responding to a uh, comment in one of my previous videos uh, to do more videos about opera glasses. So uh, what you see here is the majority of my collection of antique opera glasses. Some of these you may recognize from, uh, from previous videos. Uh, some of these you may have never seen before. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to go through it and uh, show you what we have here. Uh, these all date from between about 1880 to about 1910-1920. Uh, they're made of a variety of materials. Um, the majority of these are made of brass or are made of a substance called nickel silver. They're covered in a variety of things, and I'll just go through that now. So what we have here is uh, the really cheap ones um, are typically covered in stuff like leather, which is what we have up the back here. This is green leather, brown leather, brown leather. Uh, and then we have like this here. We'll talk about this a bit more later. Um, for something a little higher class, um, you have things like Mother of Pearl, so like this, 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 this. Um, Mother of Pearl was very common for antique opera glasses, just because Mother of Pearl itself, the substance, is so common. I mean, like every oyster shell, every abalone shell, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's basically what Mother of Pearl is. It's just it's 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 the inside of oyster shells. Um, so it's it's very common. It's a relatively cheap substance. Um, I picked up these for like twenty or thirty dollars or something. They, they don't cost much. Um, two hundred dollars maybe max. Maybe two fifty if they're really nice. Um, but and then next grade up from that is enamel. Now, enamel opera glasses are, you know, they're like the really, really fancy ones. They're the ones that everyone wants to collect. They're the ones that everyone wants to buy. Uh, and as a consequence, they can be very, very, very expensive. Um, I have seen pairs in not great condition uh, for sale at six seven eight nine hundred dollars and more and they sit they sit forever um so as a result just because they are so expensive i don't have that many of them here i mean i've got uh this one here at the back this one this one this is not enamel i'll talk about this one later as well uh so basically how these are made is i'll pick this one so you have the body of the opera glasses. Und underneath this is this is um, this is nickel silver, and so basically they would have the body of the opera glasses without the uh, mother of pearl and the glass and all the mechanisms and everything. They would paint it first. They would engrave the uh, pattern, the uh, beautiful guilloche pattern. Uh, underneath on the bare metal then they would paint over the enamel paint and once that had been painted over they would bake it hard in a kiln uh, it's like clay so it gets it nice and hard then once it's baked and they take it out all these little decorations like these little these little cherubs or putti or angels uh, the flowers on the back that's all hand painted that's all hand painted. It's not like a decal or something that, that you stick on like a sticker. It's all done with a little tiny brush. Uh, same for these. Uh, same process. Um, you do the engine turning or the geoche work. Then you put the enamel. Then you bake it. Then you paint it. Uh, so And then same here. So that's why the enamel ones are so expensive, because uh, it's it's the work that went into making them. Uh, and enameling was very common in Europe 
uh, and America in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. It was a very, very popular uh, um, method of uh, decoration for fairly obvious reasons. I mean, you can get lots of colors, lots of patterns, designs. Uh, and then once it's baked, you can paint whatever the hell you want on top of it. So, you know, that's great. Uh, then we have, uh, if you can't afford enamel, then you might buy a pair of resin opera glasses. That's what these ones are here. This is, this is resin. This is like, um, uh, it's, it's a bit like, not, it's not like rubber or plastic. It's a bit, it's a bit like plastic. It's like a cheap form of plastic. And then all these little metal pieces, like these frills, little stars and everything. They're all just stuck on like glue. You're just stuck in. In fact, you can see a couple of them have dropped out. I mean, these are about 120 years old. Um, and then you have stuff like this. This is a uh, pair of very nice... Um, binoculars and they have a nice little feature which is that they are trifocal so we have three settings which is marine for sea use field for land use and then theater for use at the theater right had to put the phone down for a couple of minutes but I'm back now and uh, gonna do a bit more talking so, uh, when it comes to antique uh, opera glasses, there are generally two types. There are these, which are just, you know, the ordinary type, like miniature binoculars. And then there are those which people really love with the handles on the side, like this one. Let's see if I can get this out for you. It's a bit stiff. Here we go. Uh, now these are called lorgnette opera glasses. Uh, comes from the French lorgnette, uh, which means to leer or to stare at. Uh, basically the idea is that you can rest your arm down and hold this right up to your eyes and you don't have to worry about your wrist getting tired while you're looking at the play or watching the performance. Uh, and your arm can just rest on the armrest of your chair in the theatre or in your lap. Um, and it, it's very comfortable. I mean, I go to the theatre two or three times a year with family and friends and relatives. And uh, it's... A lot of fun to bring these along, you know, to use them for what they were designed for. And I do take them along. And I do use them. And I do use my lorgnette opera glasses. And they're very comfortable uh, for resting in your lap and watching a play or watching a musical. Uh, lorgnettes, um, it depends on the model, how long the handle extends. Like, this is only... This one is only one extension, as you can see. Whereas you can get other pairs, like, uh, which one? Uh, this one, for example. So this is also single extension. Or you can get something like this one, which is double extension like this. So it telescopes out twice. Then it's just the uh, usual process of folding it over and you can just hold it very comfortably you can just sit back. I've got my arm resting on the uh, armrest of my chair and I've got my camera at eye level and you can see it's quite comfortable. Um, you know, you can hold, you can maintain this for quite a while and just, you know, watch a play, watch a performance, watch a musical, laugh, listen to music. Uh, it's very comfortable. So, yeah, that's why I have, and these are mostly 
um, on the right hand side. I have not yet seen a pair of opera glasses with the lorgnette handle on the left. They might exist, I've never seen one. So that just slides in there like so. And then it just folds over like so. And then they, these just focus like every other one. So you have the focus wheel. So zoom in, zoom out, like so. Pop that down there. Um, this is a rather interesting pair here. This is another um, double extending pair. So this comes out like that, then it goes, oh, yeah, this one's a bit stiff, but yeah, it comes all the way out like that, and then you can just close it up afterwards. Um, this one has a really interesting feature, which I haven't seen on any other opera glasses before, and that is this little button here on the side. If you press this, the handle comes off, which is really neat. I mean, I don't know why you would bother having a feature like this unless it's to make these easier to pack or to clean it or something. I don't know, but it's an interesting little feature. I'll just hold this up so you can see it. So you've got this little button with a little uh, toggle in there and just like that. And then if you don't want to... Uh, accidentally remove the handle while you're using the opera glasses the little button here is actually uh, removable you just unscrew it and you can like put it away and then when you want to use it you just screw it in and then just press it in so that just pops on like so like that and there you go Up the back here we have the uh, miniature opera glasses. Now, opera glasses were very fashionable in the late Victorian era from about 1850 uh, to 1900, up through about 1920, 1930. It was very fashionable to own a pair of opera glasses and to go to the theatre and to be seen using them. So they made all different types and styles. These are all miniature. These are from about 1890 to about 1920. Um, they're all brass, as you can see. Uh, one mother of pearl, three in leather. Um, almost all these opera glasses were made in uh, France. Almost all of them were made in Paris. And as I'm sure you can guess, opera glasses were quite expensive when they were new. Uh, in fact, some of them are still bloody expensive now. And uh, so what you do find sometimes is stuff like this. This is a pair of gilt brass. That means it's brass gold plated uh, mercury gilt in gold with mother of pearl. And it's made by Le Maire of Paris, which is one of the biggest uh, optical manufacturers in France. They made all kinds of stuff. And if you look up here on the bridge, it says Xmas 1885. Um, it's very difficult to date antique opera glasses. I mean, they made the same styles for years and years, decades, you know, a set from 1870 would look very similar to a set made in 1910, 1920. Um, so really the only way you can date them is by engravings, dedications, dates, uh, looking at um, old advertisements in newspapers and magazines. Or you look at like inscriptions written inside the cases because it was a birthday present or a Christmas present to someone. 
that's about the only way you can date them. I mean, like, something like this, for example. This is a very nice one. This is uh, white enamel, mother of pearl, brass. Uh, made, well, not made, but retailed by Burley and Company in Chicago. Um, Burley and Company was a uh, luxury retailer in Chicago. They sold all kinds of stuff, silver plates, silver porcelain, uh, watches, jewelry, opera glasses, and it looks very minimalist. It's very sleek, it's very slender, it looks almost art deco. Like, you could imagine this, you know, in 1925, 1935, but it's actually much older. It's about 1900, 1910, and it's a very sleek, thin design when you compare it to, for example, something like this, which is a lot thicker and chunkier and heavier. So, yeah, I'll just uh, give a little sweep around so you can see everything. So I'm going to close off this video with a quick look at uh, storing your antique opera glasses. Uh, antique opera glasses, when they were new, they came in uh, leather pouches or cases. Um, these cases were really flimsy. I mean, they're basically cardboard lined with leather and then on the inside it's lined with like silk or velvet uh, when they were new they were quite robust um, but as they get older and older and the leather starts to deteriorate and the cardboard starts to crumble they all start falling apart and it's a real challenge um, so if you do get a pair of opera glasses with the original case, then look after them, because you won't get another one. But the vast majority of opera glasses that you see uh, in antiques, fairs, flea markets, antique shops, most of them will not have their cases, just because they don't last. They're, they're not, they weren't designed to last 120, 130 years. Uh, but I do have a couple of examples. So, for example, we have this. This is a little uh, like vinyl leather, imitation leather case. Uh, this is actually the case for this. So that goes in there like that. And uh, then for the, uh, just trying to make some space here. Then for the lorgnette glasses, uh, for like, like this, for example, uh, these didn't have cases. No cases were ever made for lorgnettes opera glasses. Just because the handle just, you know, the handle just made it too difficult to build a case around it. So, what they did instead was, when you got a pair of lorgnette glasses, they gave you, they gave you this. This is the uh, original pouch. They were just like cotton cloth pouches. Uh, lined inside, as you can see, uh, and in very nice condition for something that's a hundred odd years old. So basically, it's just a drawstring pouch. You open it, you chuck these inside, uh, and they just sit in there very comfortably like that. So as you can see, it's exactly the right size, and the drawstring at the top. Now, when I bought this, the drawstring had actually given up the ghost, the whole thing was falling apart, so I removed the original drawstring, put in, put, put in a new one, and uh, fixed it up. So the, the drawstring here is a replacement, but the pouch itself is exactly as I found it. I mean, I cleaned it a bit, dusted it, uh, got rid of some of the lint and all that kind of stuff, but other than that, it's perfect, and this is exactly how it would have looked when it was new. So anyway, that's my um, video about my about most of my antique opera glasses collection, antique theatre glasses, theatre binoculars. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to see more 
if you want me to do a video about any of the particular um, glasses that you see here then I'm happy to do that just leave a message in the comments section below and I can do that it's no problem so I'll just give a little sweep around and there we are thank you very much for watching uh, as usual, I do have information and postings on my blog, so go and check that out. Uh, again, the link to my blog is in the description below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.